to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone. This video will deal with the number and operations domain for first grade, which builds from the work done in the NBT domain in kindergarten. As you can see, students will extend their knowledge of the counting sequence, begin to understand the place value system and properties of operations, and use that information to add and subtract within 100. All of the standards in this domain are important. In the time we have, we will only be able to examine some of them. Standard 1, NBT 1. In kindergarten, students learn to count to 100 and write numerals to 20. They also learn to count by tens, but only on the decades, 10, 20, 30, etc., not 14, 24, 34, etc. Pointing to numbers on a 100 chart is a great way for kids to learn to count. Also, blocking out certain numbers and having them determine what they are by looking at the numbers next to them is also effective. Teaching numbers to 120 means we bring in a partial 100s chart, and we have a discussion with students, wow, you've learned to count to 100. We've been, you did it all year in kindergarten. Now we have another 100s chart. How do you think you would say these numbers? This is a point where a student is going to say 101. It's at that point immediately that students have to be told that we do not use the word and when we're saying a number. That doesn't happen until we get to decimals. This is 101, 102, 103, and so on. It's important to do activities with the hundreds chart now, moving from 90 to 100, 101, 102, 103, and 90, 100, 110, 120. We also need to count by tens within the decade. That means 26, 36, 46, 56. Let's look at some activities that students can do to help them learn to read and write numbers within 120. Starting with base 10 blocks. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then they have to write the number. We're using graph paper to give some structure since they don't have the place value strips that we used earlier. 74. Continue with that for a couple of days, just using base 10 blocks or other concrete objects, and then move to a more pictorial model, like dot cards. Now the student has to go 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4. We want them to be able to quickly see that this is 34, but that's going to take time. At first, they'll go 10, 20, 34. But after a few days of practice on the dot cards, they'll start to see that quickly that that's 3 tens, 34, and have them write it. So with this, you have kids practicing reading and writing numbers. And after they get really comfortable using the dot cards, we bring in the number cards. Now they just read this as 63, and they can copy the number because it's right here for them. Building slowly with this concrete, pictorial, abstract method will really help the kids develop the number sense and help with their place value understanding. In second grade, students will count, read, and write numbers to 1,000. On to standard 1, NBT 2. Although the students were taught a little bit about tens and ones in kindergarten, this standard introduces the term bundle to students for the first time. Bundling means putting together ten ones and calling that bundle a ten. They will learn that the decade numbers can be thought of as a certain amount of tens. 
This is incredibly important because it will help students see that all addition and subtraction problems can be thought of as a series of one-digit operations with occasional rebundling. This concept is a big step in the gradual development of the addition and subtraction algorithms. Let's look at three activities we can use to help students understand the concept of bundling. First, give them some straws between 11 and 19. I have 18 here. And ask them to count 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And use the term bundle. Tell them, OK, take your tape and bundle those. Now, tell them to say 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A 10 and 8 ones is 18. That's one method. Base 10 blocks are also perfect for this. 10 singles and 2 singles makes 12. That's how they understood it in kindergarten. The number 12 was 10 ones and some more ones, 2. In first grade, the distinction is now, we trade out the 10 ones for a 10. Now a 12 is a 10 and two ones. And then they can also build the teen numbers and other numbers using the base 10 blocks and one. A 10 and three makes 13. In second grade, students will extend this concept by bundling 10 tens to make 100 and bundling 10 hundreds to make 1,000. On to standard one, NBT3. This is a standard where students learn the terms greater than and less than and the symbols that go along with them. For this standard, we will use place value strips. These strips really help students see how numbers are built, meaning the structure of numbers. Let's build 12 and 22. 12 is a 10 and a 2. 22 is two tens, a 20, and a 2. Now, comparing these numbers, we simply have to look at the place values, starting on the left at the highest place value. In 12, the tens is a 1. In 22, the tens are a 2. Which number has more tens? Well, 22, then. Therefore, 12 is less than 22. Now, you can use the language, alligator's mouth eats the bigger number. That's fine. But in reality, less than is pointing to the left. And on a number line, numbers to the left are always less than numbers to the right. Let's look at two more numbers. 35 is built with three tens, 30 and five ones, 35. 34 is built with three tens, and four ones, 34. Now we have a situation where the number in the tens place is the same, three tens and 35, three tens and 34. How are we going to compare them? Well, let's just look at the next place value, the ones. This number has five ones. This number has four ones. Five is greater than four. Therefore, 35 is greater than 34. And finally, let's look at these numbers. 67 is made of six tens, 60, and seven ones, 67. And let's look at this number. Six tens, seven ones, 67. And let's compare these. Six tens, six tens. Can't compare there. Let's go to the ones place. Seven ones, seven ones. These numbers are equivalent. So we put 67 equals 67. Kids can practice this with a game using number cards for practice and dice. They can roll the dice and build the numbers and compare them. In second grade, students will extend this standard to three-digit numbers. OK, on to standard one, NBT4. OK, this is a really important standard. In first grade, students are not expected to learn the algorithm for addition. 
We want students to play with the numbers and experiment with models so that they are set up to learn the algorithm. They are taught to add within 100 by using the properties of operations and their understanding of place value. Students should experiment with many models and strategies to perform the additions. This is how students develop flexible thinking and solidify their understanding of the base 10 place value system. We have a lot of activities here to show you, so let's start with the most simple. 9 plus 4 can be done simply by counting on. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 9 and 4 can also be done with concrete objects. So we go from fingers to concrete objects. Count out 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Add 4 more. 1, 2, 3, 4. Make a 10. 10 and 3, 13. 26 plus 4 will do with tens frames. Students should have a lot of work with tens frames. And these can come in many shapes and sizes. They can be just like this on a piece of paper. They can be more fancy where they have a little depth and the counter can sit inside of it. But either way, they're really good because watch what happens. We have to put in 26. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 19, 20. Straighten that up. And 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a lot of counting, but we want the students to be practicing their counting anyway. Touching, placing, counting all at the same time. It's 26 plus 4. I have to add 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now a student can see I have three full tens frames. So 26 plus 4 is 30. Let's look at egg crates. 16 plus 6. I love egg crates and most kids love them too because why? You can throw the chips in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then we add 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh-oh, 5, 6. We have two tens frames and two left over. 10, 22. 16 plus 6 is 22. We can also use the hundreds chart. 62 plus 30. Remember we learned to count by tens within the decades? So let's look at 62 plus 30. Where's 62? 62 plus 30. How many tens are 30? 3. 1, 2, 3. 92. 62 plus 10. 20, 30 is 92. We can also do 34 plus 8 on a hundreds chart using tens. This is cool. Let's look at 34 plus 8. 34 plus 8, instead of counting 8, let's count 10. That gets us to 44. We know 8 is 2 less than 10. Let's go 2 back. 43, 42. 34 plus 10 gets us to 44. 2 back gets us to 42. 34 plus 8 is 42. And we can use base 10 blocks. Let's do 26 plus 12 using base 10 blocks. 20, 6. 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's build the 12, 10, 2. Now just put it together. Let's put our 10s together. Let's put our 1s together and count. 10, 20, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 26 and 12 is 38. Let's look at one where we have to rebundle using base 10 blocks. Let's look at 28 to 10, 20, 8 plus 34, 10, 20, 30, 4. Let's put our 10s together, 
10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Good there. Let's put our ones together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh-oh. Too many ones in the ones place. But students know they can trade in 10 ones for a 10. So let's take 10 ones and trade it in for a 10. And our answer is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2. 28 plus 34 is 62. It's important that students in first grade get experience with all types of concrete objects to do these types of additions. By physically decomposing and composing numbers to add and subtract, students develop and reinforce their understanding of place value. And it is also important to teach these standards in the context of story problems. For example, four yellow birds were sitting on a tree branch. Four blue birds landed on the same branch. How many birds are on the branch now? In this way, we are teaching through word problems, not teaching word problems as an isolated skill. In second grade, students will do similar work with three-digit numbers. If given enough time, students will become flexible thinkers about the ways numbers work and develop deep and enduring understanding of these concepts. Thanks for watching this Math Studio Talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.